have seen the labyrinth mushroom in the UK from time to time, so it isn't unfamiliar to me, but I just never really studied it or explored it in a lot of detail before. But right now I'm in the middle of France, in the Loire Valley, and I've been coming across this mushroom a lot more. And I also start to really appreciate the symbolism of this mushroom more because to me, it's a really good reminder of how human civilization has strayed way too far from wild places. And instead we've become emotionally dependent on things like behavior modifying technology. But um, let's not digress just yet. First of all, let's take a look at how we can identify this species in the wild, as well as its impressive list of potential health benefits. Daedaliopsis confragiosa is a polypore mushroom that is widespread throughout Europe, Asia, and the east side of North America. And it's a semicircular bracket fungus that causes white rot on a variety of different hardwood trees like willow and birch. So the mycelia breaks down the structural lignin and the cellulose, removing the cell walls of its host and therefore recycling the tree back into the earth. When you find one of these mushrooms, Usually you're going to encounter a few of them because they tend to grow in communities, often in a tiered formation. And they grow year after year, but new fruiting bodies mostly form during the second half of the year, from early summer onwards. Another common name for this species is the blushing bracket, because if you press upon the white pores, they will start to turn a pinkish red color. So if you think you've found this mushroom, this is the litmus test, because as far as I know, there are no other similar polypore species where the pores actually bruise pinkish red on contact. So this is the determining factor for a positive identification. Many forest-dwelling creatures use this species as a source of food and medicine, especially insects, including many different species of beetle, which are known to lay their eggs within the rotting wood of trees that this mushroom is growing on. So this can be another factor in correctly IDing this species, because you may see the spiral patterns engraved into the wood from the beetle larvae. The Latin name Daedaliopsis relates to the ingenious artist and inventor Daedalus of Greek mythology, who designed and built the labyrinth on Crete that was used to imprison the Minotaur. And the mushroom was given this name because the reproductive underside of the fruiting body consists of a variety of different pore shapes, from small, typically round pores to elongated, almost gill-like pores, which collectively give the architecture of the porous surface an intricate, maze-like, labyrinthine appearance. Confragiosa, the second part of the Latin name, simply refers to the coarse and bumpy upper surface of the fruiting body, and its crinkled, irregular appearance. But you'll also notice zonate concentric rings that radiate outwards from the center, and that the fruiting body has no stem where it connects to the tree. And when it's fresh, the fruiting body is quite firm, but it is a little bit bendy, like cork and it has a russet-like reddish-brown color when it's young, losing vibrance as it ages, and eventually fading to gray or white when it's completely spent. Like many similar wild fungi, this species fulfills a crucially important ecological role within the forest because it takes dense organic matter and rapidly breaks it down into soil-building nutrition for the benefit of all members of the woodland community. Its wood-like texture means that it's not really edible, but it has been used for healing in both European and Asian medical traditions for a very long time. And this mushroom was even discovered when 7,000-year-old Neolithic settlements were excavated in Italy, which showed that our late Stone Age ancestors were already well aware of the medicinal capacity of this mushroom. And historically, the fruit bodies were also turned to pulp, pressed and then dried to make mushroom paper.
Recent studies have concluded that this mushroom is a concentrated source of certain triterpene compounds, sterols, polysaccharides, and unique lectins that offer a number of potential health benefits. A triterpene compound from this mushroom called lupinone has shown inhibitory effects against three of the four main types of leukemia, as well as restricting the growth of melanoma and neuroblastoma cells, and it was also cytotoxic to three different human lung cancer cell lines. This same group of triterpenes also showed antifungal properties as well as antibacterial activity against E. coli and Staphylococcus aureus amongst a range of other pathogenic bacteria. In vivo animal studies have shown that polysaccharides extracted from the mycelia have been able to inhibit the growth of certain types of sarcoma, which are connective tissue tumours, by up to 90% when administered by injection through the peritoneum, which is the membrane that surrounds the abdominal cavity and contains the lower digestive tract. Hot water extracts of the fruiting body have also been shown to significantly reduce blood pressure in cases of hypertension. Now, current research indicates that compounds within the mushroom have a beneficial effect on the renin-angiotensin system, which is a hormone signaling pathway in the body that regulates blood pressure, inflammation, and electrolyte fluid balance. So extracts of the mushroom appear to inhibit the activity of angiotensin-converting enzyme, or ACE, which is responsible for producing a potent hormone called angiotensin II that constricts blood vessels and increases blood pressure. So by reducing the activity of the ACE enzyme in cases of hypertension, the labyrinth mushroom can help to normalize blood pressure and maintain a healthy cardiovascular homeostasis. While I've been admiring and appreciating this species, I have found myself reflecting on a number of different things, like the fact that most of us have become somewhat trapped in an addictive digital labyrinth of fear and confusion, whether we're willing to admit that to ourselves or not. But just beyond the boundaries of that labyrinth lies a wild and ancient realm that can also be intimidating and confusing in the beginning, but once we gain a little bit more familiarity and we can push past the fear, there is healing and regeneration. But finding a healthy balance between that compressed digital space and a more open nature-inspired lifestyle is definitely something that, despite videos like this, I do really struggle with, you know? Running an online business has me working in front of a computer for far more time than I'd like to be, and so it does affect my mental health when I'm in front of a screen for extended periods of time, you know? I'm not happy living like that. And I think this can feel like a degenerate era for humanity. I mean, it is on many levels, and it can take a hefty toll on the mind if we don't find a more natural rhythm for living that offsets the more linear algorithms of the internet. But of course, technology isn't an inherently bad thing at all, you know? There's so many incredible life-changing achievements that are made possible thanks to technological breakthroughs, but it's the addictive, reality-warping, behavior-modifying nature of things like social media and current search engine algorithms that can be very real barriers to us being able to interface peacefully with the nature all around us. And in this way, modern life quickly becomes complicated and stressful. But if we can take a step backwards for just a moment, things instantly become more simple. And I've often found that if I can walk into the wilderness with as much openness and honesty as I can, it sometimes results in important realizations and reflections that are inspired by all of the natural phenomena that I'm connecting with. But it doesn't ever happen if I have too much internal dialogue or too many expectations. But if I can enter into that more interconnected state, then any wildlife at all can communicate these 
messages and tell these important stories. Quietly walking through the forest, for example, I can feel the hardness and emotional calcification of the heart beginning to soften, which is really what opens us up to the possibility of nature's primordial storytellers. And this is why species like Daedaliopsis confrajosa can be like emissaries of the wilderness, inviting us to immerse in the seasons and experience the interdependence of nature, and find our own place as members of this ecosystem rather than just clumsy tourists with no intuition or sense of connection. Because when we attempt to live our lives insulated from the nature all around us, the nature within becomes malnourished, and we can become sick, physically, emotionally sick, because our internal nature and the surrounding wilderness are not actually separate at all, like modern reductionist culture would have us believe. And this is why wild places can be a lot like pacemakers, because the often chaotic and unpleasant pace of our own internal nature begins to entrain itself to the seasonal rhythms of the wild, which are themselves influenced by the nature of the broader cosmos and beyond. And so this is why time spent in the wilderness can help to regulate metabolic, endocrine, neurological and immunological function, and emotional behaviour can gradually start to improve, because we are aligning ourselves with these natural energies rather than constantly fighting against them. Since becoming reacquainted with the labyrinth mushroom here in France, it's been a really important reminder for me to immerse in my wild surroundings as often as possible. And I don't just mean the outdoors, I mean specifically areas of wilderness, because I know that my mental health and my overall sense of well-being improve exponentially when I can disconnect from the digital realm for a while and explore the complex healing labyrinth of wild ecosystems. Because this is when I start to hear the stories of natural interdependence being told in these ancient wild places. But I have to reduce the constant noise within the mind and practice being quiet enough to hear these stories. Otherwise, it's never going to happen. Thank you.